Welcome to this week's edition of the America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown, where we bring you insights from our policy experts and leaders on the latest news and events. Today, we'll be highlighting key moments from our experts' media appearances, focusing on the critical issues facing our nation, issues like the economy, border security, public safety, and global affairs. Let's dive in. First up, we have Brooke Rollins, President and CEO of the America First Policy Institute, and Pam Bondi, former Attorney General of Florida, weighing in on the ongoing economic turmoil and border crisis under the Biden administration. Biden's speech to the UN, a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of nothingness. None of it makes sense. It doesn't work. The world is burning down, literally on fire, just as you said, Rob, and America's not buying it. So you see that in the polls, reflective of that, of the, you know, the stuff they're selling to America right now is not real and it doesn't work and Americans aren't buying it. Yeah. And, and so President Trump is ahead. Just look at the consumer confidence survey that came out today, declining by almost five points, mm. indicating we're headed towards a recession. And, you know, look at Americans. Americans are feeling that in real time. All voters are feeling that in real time. They're pessimistic about business. They're pessimistic about the economy with good reason, because people are living that every day. Yeah. And that's what Brooke Rollins at the American American First Policy Institute has been out there advocating. People see that. People feel the price of fuel they, they, they feel, when they have to go to the grocery store and buy a loaf of bread. But also, none of that works if you don't feel safe. And now they're trying to send her to the border on Friday. Bring <laughs> yeah, that. Right. I mean, when we left the last White House and I was there till the very end, one of the well, the very last trip we took with President Trump as president was to the border. It was to McAllen, Texas. And that day we walked that uh, that border wall that had been built during our administration. And in that section, illegal crossings had dropped 94 percent in the four years since President Trump took office. Since that time, we have had 20 million. No one even knows how many illegal aliens have crossed our border in just the last three and a half, four years. And so for her now to go to the border and say, oh, it's Donald Trump's fault. Give me a break. The American people are not stupid. The people who are going to decide this election in 21 counties in seven states are not stupid. And no matter how yeah. many times she now decides to go to the border, it's too late. Yeah. And, and, and Pam, really, I mean, that's and that's what it would have been. Yeah, and, and Americans are too smart to see that. They're too smart because they're living it every single yeah. day. The terrorists coming into this country, crime at an all-time high, all of these illegal aliens all over the country committing violent crimes, and every state is now a border state. People see that. I was at the border last week. Nothing about that border is yeah. humane. Yeah. It's horrible what's happening there. Well said. Next, we turn to Chad Wolf, former Acting Secretary of Homeland Security, who appeared on Fox Business to talk about the escalating migrant crisis and the administration's lack of effective solutions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, under the uh, categorical parole program, they call it the CHNV program under the Biden-Harris administration, individuals are flown in from uh, Venezuela, Haiti, Cuba, uh, in Nicaragua, up to 30,000 every single month. And to this date, crazy. you've had over probably a, over 700,000 Venezuelans flown into the country under this parole activity uh, in the last year and a half. Are they vetted? Well, the department will tell you they're vetted, but what we know from uh, an inspector general report from DHS is that there's an immense amount of fraud, right? You have the same emails, the same phone numbers sponsoring upwards to thousands and thousands of people, right? So one email, one phone number is sponsoring thousands of folks. That is, uh, obviously, they're taking advantage of the situation. You're supposed to have a sponsor for every individual, a, a unique sponsor for every individual coming into the country. That's not occurring. They suspended the program for about two weeks, but they've started it back up, DHS has. And uh, I, I just don't think that you can tell me that in two, two weeks they fixed all the bugs and they, they no. rooted out all the fraud, and now it's a legitimate program. It's still categorical parole. Now we turn to Michael Falkender former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, discussing the failures of Bidenomics and how it impacted American manufacturing and energy independence. That's exactly right, Larry, because under Trump, we had 460,000 manufacturing jobs created from the time he took office until the onset of the pandemic. And what did we have under Biden and Harris? We had all of those jobs come back, but then we've only had a net increase of about 100,000 jobs. And you're right, in the last two years, it's actually declined by about 3,000 jobs. And mm. why is that? 
Because as Steve just said, the Biden-Harris administration has put $1.7 trillion of new regulation on top of this economy, and any hiring that those companies are doing is not to manufacture, but instead to engage in compliance. That doesn't create more abundance. That doesn't bring down prices. That just makes doing anything here in the United States more expensive. And as we talked about before, the other thing I liked that Trump really talked about is energy. Because if we don't unleash American energy, then we cannot engage in all of this innovation in the artificial intelligence, in the manufacturing, that's such a critical input into the cost of everything we do that leading with energy again is so critical. I mean, the one thing the division of the Justice Department have just thrown a rage because they don't like business. The Biden-Harris administration really is the most anti-business administration. Gosh, you'd have to probably go back to Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the 1930s. That's how bad they are, Falkender. They really are. And I would add to that list Gary Gensler, because we have an SEC that is requiring so much in additional costs to comply with being a publicly traded company. We only have about 3,000, 3,500 publicly traded companies instead of the five to 6,000 we have. We are actually hearing from we're hearing from companies that they would rather engage in technology innovation in Europe and in China rather than here in the United States. Larry, can you think of a time when a tech company said that it's easier to do business in Europe than here in the United States? And yet that's what we're hearing because of the Lena Khan, the, the Gary Gensler and the Biden-Harris administration when it comes to the rulemaking that's happening here. So we have got to deregulate. We have got to open up capital markets. We have got to keep taxes low because this ought, this must again be the American century. In this segment, we hear from Bob Unanwe, president of Goya Foods, on the decline of the middle class and the devastating effects of Biden's economic policies. Well, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a clear comparison. Look, uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge took four years to build. Donald Trump built an economy in this country. He brought up the middle class, the working class, and that bridge was destroyed in less than a minute. Day one of the Harris administration, they declared war on fossil fuels. They uh, put out the uh, Green New Deal, a weakness around the country. And uh, Tim Walt said it best. You know, we can't afford four more years of this. And we're, we're, they've destroyed the middle class, they're destroying the working class, they're destroying this economy. What was worked before, they have no idea of what's going forward. And quite honestly, uh, th this is going to be not just destroying the middle class, it's, it's going to destroy this country. General Keith Kellogg shared his views on the escalating situation in the Middle East. In his appearance on Fox News, General Kellogg discussed Israel's strategic approach to dealing with Hezbollah and the broader regional threats. Yeah, hey, John, Israel does not trust the United States right now to be any type of peacemaker or interlocutor at all. They've just disregarded what the United States is going to do. They're going to handle this on their own, and I think they're going to be able to do it now. You can really see that they've shifted away from Gaza with the preponderance of the military force. Look at the airstrikes and look at the map that the targets that they've hit. Look what they did to the command and control. Look at them taking out major infrastructure as well. They're, they're really planning to go in really hard, and they're going to solve this. And, and I think that has got it right. He has decided to take a plan, go forward with it, and actually eliminate, at least from the south, south of the Latani River, all Hezbollah positions to allow those people, and you mentioned between 60 and 100,000, to return to their homes. And I think he's making a real point. I don't think this thing is going to de-escalate at all. I think you're looking at an escalation, not only today and tomorrow, but in the coming weeks. This fight is far from finished. In his second appearance, General Kellogg tackles the issue of election interference by Iran and the administration's lack of response. You've got the U.N. General Assembly going on in New York City. President Biden is up there. President Pazeshkian of, of Iran is there as well. You know, this is the time when Biden should walk over to Pazeshkian, put his arm around him and say, hey, bud, let's go over here and talk for a minute. He said, let's make this very clear. If you attack an American politician, somebody like a Donald Trump or any other senior official, there will be a state of war between the United States and Iran. That's the only thing they understand. And they come at it with force. And then on the, on the second thing, and the second thing, let me talk about you arming Hezbollah and the Houthis and Hamas. And you need to knock that off. And then over for a tertiary bit, you know, maybe you ought to stop sending drones to Russia as well. This is the chance to do it. He's not going to do it. But it needs to be made very clear to Iran. You do not, you do not even talk about attacking or thinking about attacking by your third cousin, 
of any senior official of the United States. We need to do it. Have we done it? No. But it needs to be said. It needs to be said to the world. Okay. It needs to be said to the region. It needs to be said to Iran. Finally, we turn to Matt Whitaker, former acting attorney general, discussing the Department of Justice bias actions against President Trump and the implications for our legal system. Certainly, they're going to seek that. They're going to get that. I just, the question is, there's no doubt that everybody wanted this guy detained and kept in jail pending his trial and whatever the ultimate charges are, and he'll probably spend the rest of his life in prison. But at the same time, you just can't put this out in the public so recklessly, uh, really, to, for the whole world to understand that there's now uh, a, a stated bounty and a number on President Trump's head. I just, you know, this just, this is so outrageous yeah. that it's incomprehensible to me. That wraps up this week's America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you found these insights for our policy experts valuable. Let us know your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and share this video. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an important update on the America First agenda. For more information on our policies and initiatives, visit AmericaFirstPolicy.com.